planning a hair transplant in the future. I have a large forehead that will not look good without a framing of hair. I'm quite happy having short hair as long as I can have a frame of hair around my face. So I am prepared to have less density and minimal coverage of the crown, if ever, needed to make sure I can still frame my face. Since I am preparing for the future, I'm prepared to have multiple surgeries as needed, as I can start saving now. Is it possible to talk with a hair transplant doctor to discuss my options and how realistic I can be? Thank you for your question. You have submitted a question with an understanding that you will need more than one transplant and you are being very rational and strategic in your thought process. And so as far as what to do about your hair transplant plans, I'm going to actually introduce you to something that may be of benefit to you even if you choose to move, on, move forward with hair transplant. What is clear is your recognition that hair loss is an ongoing process. Hair thinning or male pattern hair loss is basically a genetic pattern that has a variable age of onset based on your family history and a rate of progression which means that for every patient who gets a hair transplant there is invariably a time where they'll need another hair transplant and it depends on the patient's desire. But this frustrates anyone who wants to solve the problem of hair loss because there is a mismatch between the donor area and the area that needs hair. In our practice we have been very fortunate in developing a method called hair regeneration. Hair regeneration is the use of a material called extracellular matrix when combined with platelet-rich plasma in a way that we've developed when injected into the scalp can actually reverse hair thinning. It may sound too good to be true but we have over five years of data to support its efficacy. It's a one-time treatment and we've been able to establish and a lot of data based on other pa hundreds of patients that we've treated who've come to us from around the world. The bottom line is as long as there's existing hair there is a tremendous opportunity to reverse the thinning and get density that far exceeds in most cases depending on the number of existing hairs than the results when compared to the results of a hair transplant. So in our practice if someone comes in and wants a hair transplant we say fine we can consider that but first let's evaluate you with the microscope and look at the potential for hair growth from the number of hairs that we can see that can be thicker from hair regeneration. And what we'll do is we'll do the injection. We'll look at the results and follow people every three months all the way to 18 months at which point we can be 99.9% .9 sure that we've reached the maximum potential. There are some people that will re-inject because there are people who are more advanced and benefit from another injection. But that being said, the amount of growth can be dramatic and we are always impressed by the, amount, the responses that our patients get and it seems to be a trend that the younger and earlier onset someone has hair loss and they come to us when they notice it, the more volume, and volume we're able to achieve. But We've treated people as young as 18 and as old as in the people in their 70s. And consistently, every male pattern hair loss essentially has some kind of benefit in that we stop the progression and we get thickening of hair. In fact, we even get a lot of people with white hair, very white hair, coming back with darker hair. So there appears to be some benefit in reversal of hair graying. But that being said, that strategy may help you 
in, pro, in, in planning out hair transplantation to frame your face so that you have more hair and density and you may not need as many transplants as you're prepared to have. So learn more about hair regeneration. Learn about, um, of course, the other medical treatments, which I did not mention, but you're probably already aware of finasteride and minoxidil. And with that understanding, you have, I think, more choices besides doing the standard approach that has been going on for 30 plus years of doing hair transplant until you run out of donor area. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. And thank you for your question.